We're turning our attention now to Camogie. We're picking our Camogie team of the year. Valerie, Ra Valerie Wheeler, good morning. How are you keeping? Good morning. Happy Christmas. How are you? Happy Christmas indeed. So you've been covering a lot of the Camogie Championship for Off the Ball this year. I understand it was a very difficult task actually condensing this down to, to 15 of the best players. Yeah, I actually think it should probably be easy name a firstborn of your child. I found it extremely <laughs> difficult. It took about three or four days to try and pin this down without upsetting anybody, but here we are now. Well, no pressure, but we're going to have uh, the Camogie Player of the Year on the line with us very shortly as well. So, uh, as I say, not a lot of pressure on you to, to get this absolutely spot on. Uh, let's start in goals. Who have you gone for as your goalkeeper? Um, well, it was a tough decision, but I think that I have chosen Sarah Healy of Galway. Um, I mean, she only started in goals at the age of 14, so it's hard to believe that she's playing um, goalie for an inter-county team and being All-Ireland champions last year. She often plays out forward for her club and she actually takes the freeze for her club. So it was only a couple of years ago when someone decided to throw in goals one day and that's where she flourished. And I think she's she's kind of, she has no fear in the goals because she's mm. so used to being an outfield player that she goes in there with no fear. Um, look, her puckouts are extending and she has serious, serious distance in them. So I have picked Sarah Healy for goals. So that's one Galway person in there. Let's get on to the full back line then. At cornerback, who have you gone for? In cornerback, I went with Michelle Tehan, all right? She is a student in DCU. She is was a massive key player for them this year in defence. She's really established herself, like, as a corner, wing back. Um, this is her fifth year only playing in county And, like, her semi-final performance kind of nails her all-star position for me. Um, like, she does the dogged, the hard defence. She does that tough work of getting stuck in there. So I really think that... Now, I, Michelle does deserve it, but there was a big fight between me picking Sean Healy of Galway and Michelle, but Michelle tipped her. Right, so Sean Healy, unlucky to miss out there. So who's your other cornerback then? Uh, mother cornerback, I would have gone for Davina Tobin at the other side. Um, she is, like, a lady that doesn't really get much credit. Um, she was on Amy O'Connor in the semi-final, and it was mm. a massive battle between the two of them. Like, it was a great watch. Like, she really was Amy's shadow. And it's not, it's always a great day. I mean, if you can keep Amy O'Connor quiet, you really deserve to be in this spot. But um, she shut down her performance completely. She followed them around and the hard work paid off. So I've picked Davina Tobin at the other side. It's sometimes pretty easy to identify a great goalkeeper, full-back combination. I think that's exactly what you've done here with your all-star selection in terms of the Camogie team. Who have you gone for a full-back? Full-back, I mean... There's no one that I, I, there was no one coming to my mind. Like this woman, I was like, this one's going straight in there. I didn't mm. even fight when anyone over picking her up. She's absolutely solid as a rock in there. I've gone for Sarah Durbin. Like she's been absolutely flawless as a fullback. Like she's there over a decade now at this stage. She's 32 years of age. I mean, she's absolutely dynamite in there. I mean, if Sarah Healy in goals, I would feel so secure with having Sarah Durbin in front of me. If I was a goalkeeper, I'd be like, I'm in for a great time here in goals because I have that woman in front of me. <laughs> so she absolutely owns the position. And I mean, like she just had a colossal, colossal performance this year. So two Galway, two Kilkenny so far. It's Sarah Healy in goals, Michelle Tehan, Sarah Durbin, Davina Tobin as the full back line. Let's get into the half-back line then. Who's got the number five jersey? Number five jersey. Um, I also, I was kind of struck trying to pick who would I put into number five and I was putting, I kind of was between three players, but eventually I narrowed it down to one and I did pick Hannah Looney of Cork. Um, I just think that Hannah is a jewel star and I think the work that she gives to both football and camogie is outrageous and she's got such power there in the backs and I think she's a really key player for them. I mean, she spoke out earlier this year of the struggle she had, and I think it's important that players do that as well because other players might follow suit if they feel like it's okay that they need to talk to them, and she did. But she's an extremely, extremely important and experienced player, even though she's a really, really young for Cork. Uh, she's four All Ireland Camogie medals, and it's just unfortunate that she didn't get that one the weekend for the footballers. But I have gone for Hannah Looney. Good stuff. And the rest of the half back line then? First the half back line I have picked in number six is Claire Feeling. Um she is another woman that has serious contributions to that team and it really, really does go unnoticed. I mean, she led the way in the final for me. Um she is lethal under a high ball and I think that that she caught a late ball towards the end of the Galway game. And that to me, I was like, you know what, she was just she's just unbelievable in rooks, hooks, blocking. Like Claire Feeling is your woman that you want in there. So she's got the number six jersey. And then Grace Walsh in at seven. Of course, Grace Walsh in at seven. I think Grace this year, like, 
her work rate was outrageous. Like she got some amount of ball in the final to be fair to her. And like she's escaping from COVID-19. I mean, week in, mm. week out in the front line as a nurse, but on the field, I think between her defence and attack, she really gave the perfect performance in the All-Ireland final. And she even got a crucial score. I mean, her players, her teammates have been mocking her for getting a point because they said all year she wasn't getting anything at training. They'd go wide. So they were delighted that she got the score for herself in the final. So she definitely deserves an upper All right. So let's uh, move on to our midfield then. Give us uh, the midfield pairing that you eventually went with. Um, Eva Odulu, number eight. There was no one else I'd rather pick either, to be honest. She's she's been around now since twenty fourteen. She made her debut then. Um, I'd love, I really would love to see the GPA stats off the back of Eva's jersey because this is a woman that's absolutely everywhere. I mean, if she gets on a ball and she goes off on a run, she's like a cheetah. There's genuinely no catching her. And <laughs> um, she's small and she's fiery and she's everywhere. And I really think that Eva would serve the number eight for me. And is it our first tip player? Or, or no, we've got a couple of tip all-stars, but the, the first one to announce so far, the other midfielder here. Yeah, Karen Kennedy. Um, I mean, you could easily put Neve Kilkenny in there as well. I was stuck between the two of them, but I really think that this year, Karen Kennedy came roaring into the inter-county scene. You know, I think she really made a name for herself in the semi-final. She was so brave, so skillful. I mean, she got that late goal from that really given the breathing space to get through to the quarterfinals. So, um. I think she's so athletic as well. I think it'd be really unfair if I left her out of the team because from what I've seen of her this year, being at a few games, you know, she really, really owned that position. And I I couldn't have picked anyone else but Karen. Good stuff. All right. So give us the three players in in the half forward line now, Valerie. Half forward line, I've gone for Carrie Dolan. Um, she's crucial to the Galway team. And uh, she's also powerful, nippy and skillful. And I you know, without Carrie Dolan, to be honest, I think Galway would, you know, well, like, to be honest, I'm not going to say without Carrie Dolan, they'd be lost because they wouldn't because they'd flinch of other players. But she is a crucial member of the panel, to be honest. Um, in at number 11, I've gone for Stallworth and Dalton of Kilkenny. Um, she's been around a while. She could have decided to sit this one out due to COVID and having a family at home and stuff. Uh, she's six all-stars already to her name. So I'm delighted to give her another one here. And she, you know what, she's just... She gets stuck into it and there's no messing with Anne. And I think that even when you talk to her after a match, like the last day when she won the semi-final to get in against Cork, I was like, what are you going to do to celebrate? She was like, oh, I'm going to wait out to get a feed of pancakes. And that's just the woman <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you do it in the COVID time. Feed of pancakes is absolutely the way to do it. Uh, and then uh, at 12, uh, we were going Cork again here, are we? Yeah, we're going Cork again. I've gone for Amy O'Connor. Um, I know Amy normally wears the number 10 jersey, but I think mm. in order to try and fit some people into my All-Star team, I put it the other side. Um, her performance, she's just so dangerous in and goals, you know. She's, her confidence oozes, and like that's a great thing as well because she really backs herself. You know, even if there's someone in a better position and Amy decides to go for a goal and she mightn't be, she will back herself 100% and she probably will get the goal. Um, she was absolutely tremendous. She's a really disciplined player and I think Amy deserves that spot. I mean, she got a 2-1 in the, I think she was the quarterfinal in horrific conditions and she's just lethal in goals. You're spreading the love then in the full forward line. Three different counties represented here, 13, 14, 15. Who have you gone for? Um, right, Beth Carton of Waterford. Um, Beth, she's just dangerous and her frees are absolutely flawless as well. Um, she got 131 this season alone, so to leave her out of my all-star team would be absolutely ridiculous. I know they have failed to reach the last four over the last few years and they'll be really disappointed with that, but I think Waterford are really making strides in the Camogie world. Um, but Beth Carton, she's dangerous on the edge of the square and... I'd hate to be a backer. I'd hate to be a goalie with Beth Carton coming in on top of me because she's bound to do something dangerous. Full forward then? Full forward. This lady for me, um, she's, do you know what? It's Denise Gall. Like, this, this lady for me really nailed her spot, I suppose, in the All-Ireland final. I think everyone knows now at this stage that penalty, like the absolute Leroydy that it took for Denise Gall to step up and take that penalty and rattle into the battle net. Um, but even I think her composure after the penalty as well it said a lot about Denise um, I don't know if you've seen it you probably have but when Denise scored that penalty you know she turned around she telling everyone calm mm. down calm down we still need to go but she's an amazing free taker um, she's monstrous freeze I mean she can do it long she can do it short there's nothing that Denise Gall can do and I think she deserves it she deserves number 14 jersey and then finally before we actually announce your player of the year who is number 15 going to 
I have given it to Cotavan of Tipperary, um, another tip woman. She's joining Karen Kennedy in my all star team. Um, tip were beaten like both at the final hurdle, um, maybe you know last year and this year, and I think large parts of the game Tipperary are on top, and I think it's really due to Cotavan and her performance. She's just amazing. I think everyone remembers this year of her her club viral video that went viral in the club scene when she did the Hurley switch. It was just unfortunate that she didn't get the point. We're yeah. still mocking her over not getting the point over the bar, but. Yeah. Um, Cotavan, she's amazing and her first touch is absolutely ridiculous so that's why she's in there. Now the very serious business I'll just recap the team before we do it. Sarah Healy in goals, Michelle T and Sarah Durbin, Davina Tobin is the full back line, Hannah Looney Claire Phelan, Grace Walsh in the half backs, Aoife Donoghue, Karen Kennedy is your midfield. The forwards then at number 10 we have Carrie Dolan Anne Dalton at 11 and at 12 Amy O'Connor and then Beth Carton as you say of Waterford at 13, Denise Gall of Kilkenny number 14 and the other corner forward is Cotavan of Tipperary. Which of those 15 players was the best Camogie player on show this year, Valerie? To me, there's only one woman that stands out and I think that, I don't think anyone will be upset with me or disappointed when I pick this lady, but 337 in five championship matches and who I'm picking as my player of the year is Kilkenny's Denise Gall. And we're delighted to say good morning to Denise Gall and congratulations to Denise Gall. Fair play, you are the off the ball star Camogie player of the year. Uh, how does it feel to, to capture this and, and add this to, to, to your slew of medals you won this year? <laughs> Uh, well, as how's it going? Uh, thanks for having me on. Anyway, um, much for luck. It's it's good, I suppose. It's it's nice, nice one to add. Watch your luck once we won the match. At the end of the day, it was the biggest thing for us. But much I suppose can't complain either. And after a good year, so. Valerie touched on the penalty really well there. There are two different elements to it. It's the penalty itself and what happens immediately afterwards. On the penalty itself, how many times did you hit that exact shot in training in the the weeks leading up to the match? Oh God, I don't know. Like. She's the, I was saying after the match, the Thursday evening, I, I had an absolute mayor on the penalties there and I, I just left. I was like, oh, I, I just nearly hoping we won't get one in the match. <laughs> but um, no, look, I suppose when you're practicing them, you'll be trying every angle out and look on the day. I just kind of noticed that Sarah's holding the hurl one way and just said, I'll just go the other and hope, hopefully I'd say I'll never hit a better one again, but your luck, I'll take that anyway. There was like a beautiful technique on it, almost like a golfer approaching a dog leg off a tee box just to keep it away from the goalkeeper. It was as much the swerve on it as much as the, the clean hit it felt. Yeah, I suppose if I'm left-handed, it probably would be easier to go across the body, like mm. say the other side. But I oh, look, I just said, look, I'll go that way now. <laughs> I usually would go the other way now, not giving away at But um, I just said, look, I, I'll give it a lash now, down, down the left and hope, please God. Oh, I was never so happy to see something hitting the back of the net anyway, so. Yeah, and and then, mm. sorry, go ahead, Valerie. Please, I mean, plenty of heartache over the last few years and you've had a chance maybe to now reflect back on what you have achieved. And it's probably difficult that you weren't able to celebrate much together over it. Ah, yeah, I suppose, look, uh, I suppose everyone knows what happened the last few finals or that, but look, um, I don't know, yeah, this year was just another year, like, especially with everything going on, just to be able to go out and play at the end of the day was the biggest thing, and it's nice, yeah, it's nice after the few days when it kind of settles down and you're at home with the family and you're kind of just thinking back on the match or you're just sending a few WhatsApps to the girls and just catching up and, like, I don't know, sure, everyone's just on a pure high now and it'd be great, like, over the Christmas as well, so I'm extra, so... Brilliant chat. And how special is that after the disappointment of the last few years, especially for everyone in the Kilkenny camp, to, to finally get back there again and, and to go into a winter with something joyous to celebrate? Oh, yeah, geez, definitely. I suppose there's a lot of us there who would have, I think, we're at about seven losses now, a few of us who were there since 2009, so, like, it's not nice either. But, look, every year is just different. You have different girls coming in and out and, like, just take every year, like... I don't know, sometimes like we don't really think about it as much maybe as what's made of it. But um, mm. look, I suppose you're just privileged to go out every day and represent your county, like so whether you win or, or not, like and obviously it's always a bonus when you do when you do get to win. So Well, uh, many congratulations once again, Denise. Happy Christmas to you and hopefully you get to enjoy this for a little while longer. Thanks a million. Same to you, lads. Cheers, Good Denise. One. Thanks for taking the call. Fair play, Valerie. Great stuff on uh, on picking the team. How many of those decisions were nip and tuck, and how many of those did you agonise over? Um, I I probably will. I probably will agonise over uh, Michelle Tien and Shauna Healy. I think they're the that's probably someone who I will probably regret leaving out. I think someone else that's probably the most fortunate to miss out the team would be Neve Rocket. She had some 
amazing goals this year. I don't know if you've seen the goals, but I had uh, maybe Chloe Mori of Clare as well. I just think if Clare maybe got that bit further the championship, we saw a bit, bit more of Chloe, I'd have loved to have been able to include her. But look, I could be here all day saying, I'd love to include, I'd love to include mm. this person, that person. So I'm actually really happy with the team I've chosen. So no hate, please. <laughs> uh, how, co how confident are you of uh, this Kilkenny team going on to perhaps do the same thing again next year? It, it's been a lot of talk about the quick turnaround now between all Ireland's and maybe in the context of last weekend, how it might be a good thing for Mayo to get back on the horse. Uh, and the opposite side of things, this Kilkenny team finally getting back to winning one, it kind of feels like there's a hunger about that and they should be the front runners to try and do it again next year. Definitely. I think you're spot on all with saying that, like, I think the quick turnaround will really, really suit Kilkenny, you know, and especially when you don't have a chance to be celebrating and going out every night of the week, you know, now you can't. So you're probably going to be, you know, keeping a low profile over the next couple of weeks because of COVID. So I think they'll be more hungry to go on and do more. As like Denise said, there are years and years of heartbreak. She's seven or eight defeats. I mean, that is crazy. And for them to keep coming back and get to that final stage, I mean, that series shows amazing character of part of the team. So I think themselves and Galway will be fairly up there again next year, but we won't write off Cork either one. No, absolutely not. But what's what's the feeling in Cork? I mean, is it's not just the the double that's doable anymore. There needs to be the quadruple next next year, or at some point down the line, surely. I know. I thought the ladies football would get us over the line on Sunday, but unfortunately they didn't. It's been a disastrous year for Cork. <laughs> <laughs> but look, hopefully next year will be a bit better as a Cork supporter. We'll hang in there. Sure. We were doing our awards earlier on and uh, we were kind of picking the uh, I Know Football is Grand Award of the Year and uh, I can't even remember who Jared gave it to in the end. He gave it to the Cavan winning Ulster. I'm sure you would have picked Cork beating Kerry in Munster though as, as the moment that saved football this year, in, in men's football anyway. Um, to be honest, Owen, I probably would have picked Tip winning the right. Munster final. I know as a Cork person, I would have loved to pick it, but if you actually sat back and look at the game, I think when Cork went on and didn't do much after that game, I think it really squished all me picking. If maybe Cork went on and won the Munster final, maybe I would have been like, that was a huge game. Sure. But when they went on and didn't, you know, didn't push forward, I think I would pick Tipperary winning. Well, listen, all the best for 2021 uh, on behalf of all of us towards everybody in Cork, because sure, we love Cork here. Maybe the quadruple will happen. And fair play in picking the team. Uh, Valerie, cheers. Thanks, Will. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you too. You are